Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Vortex Adventure with Buen and today we have a commentary episode. Um, in the case you didn't know, there is an article in the Newsweek that alleges that FBI warned parishes uh, in the United States, the parishes of the Orthodox Church, that the Russian intelligence might try to infiltrate uh, Orthodox parishes for the purpose of collecting, uh, you know, intelligence. And I've seen screenshots uh, of this supposed news uh, from CNN, uh, where it says that uh, FBI uh, thinks that uh, the Russian state might use some 21,000 uh, Orthodox parishes in the US for the purposes of espionage. And of course, people, Orthodox people, were generally mocking the idea. <laughs> I wish we had that many parishes, which I don't know how many parishes there are in the US. The number does seem that inflated. And uh, the, at least that writing seemed, um, well, to represent the Orthodox Church, uh, or well, the organization of the Orthodox Church in a way that does not really align to reality. It sort of implies that the Orthodox Church is this, you know, um, like, like if there are no different jurisdictions in the United States. However, I, um, because most people face that news with face value, uh, I actually took the time to read about it and uh, I must say, now this might as well be a piece of propaganda, what do I know? I, I, you know uh, I'm no clairvoyant, so it might be a piece of propaganda, it might be actually genuine, and I want to pitch in why I think it could be genuine. So, uh, according to the article, uh, a member of uh, the Department for External uh, Affairs of the Russian Orthodox Church traveled to the United States, and he was uh, stopped by Border and Customs Patrol, uh, and uh, it turned out that uh, this person was actually, uh, well, a Russian state officer or something, and that uh, he actually intended to try to persuade uh, both Russian and Greek Orthodox uh, church members, he did not specify whether these were like clergy, laity, whoever, uh, uh, into compliance and collecting intelligence, and that uh, he had materials that was clear that uh, were clearly intended you know to blackmail these church members and this caught my eye uh you know um the sad fact of the matter is that in traditionally orthodox countries and it pains me a lot to say this the orthodox church does tend to be so to speak another ministry in the state, uh, as in state ministry, uh, for the biggest religion in the country. And, gen uh, you know, generally there is this, one may say like, um, uh, Caesaro papism, where, or what we might call symphony, where there is this, uh, co uh, you know, uh, common work between the state and the church, but generally it's not really that much of a case because in such um, power plays uh, the church is generally a weaker player. Um, and this is done mostly through blackmail, sadly. Um, what the communists did in Yugoslavia at the very least was to prepare these honey traps because uh, the Orthodox priests generally on big feast days go through homes and, uh, you know, bless water. And because the church wasn't as heavily persecuted here as it was in Soviet Union, however, that does not mean that there was no persecution. Uh, this is uh, one of the forms it took. So uh, when a priest would come to an apartment or house to bless the water, uh, he would be awaited uh, by hostess of the household, completely naked, and this was a plant. And if the priest fell and sinned, uh, he would be recorded and this would be used against him in order to ensure his compliance with the Communist Party. Uh, there is a person, and I'm very often asked about him, who got, you know, an upgrade, 
and practically overnight uh, he transformed for worse. And a lot of people ask me what on earth happened to him. It's like, you know, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and, and I'm, I generally said, well, he's most probably blackmail, not because of some of his personal wrongdoing, but uh, you basically are forced uh, into compliance with the state, you know, to overlook some very shady stuff that the state is doing. Uh, and in exchange, they do not publish the material that they have either on you or much more importantly, on other people. And in such a case, you are basically in that situation from the movie Silence, if you have seen it. And uh, the basic premise or the question of the movie is, would you reject Christ if rejecting Christ meant that some other person will be spared torture? You know, it's a question that I often wonder about. I mean, if it's me personally, I have no issue. I might fail at it, you know, I might reject Christ, God forbid, but at least I know what the right answer is. And over time, I was sort of coming more and more to the conclusion, you know, that that other person is evil. I'm not torturing them. It's that other person. So no, even in that case, I don't think we should reject Christ. Um, when I say I think, I'm next to 100% positive. Um, and uh, sadly, those people feel the very heavy burden of having such responsibility. And that is what I referenced in, um, you know, I hate bishops so and soimus. Uh, bishops very often have to weigh some very difficult decisions when running church. And it is easy for us, you know, lay people to put, uh, you know, uh, to condemn them, to judge them. Oh, if I were a bishop, would you, if you were a bishop, would you really, when somebody presents you with some horrible, you know, stuff such as those, it is a very difficult choice knowing that you might, and by might I mean will most probably, destroy somebody else's lives or many lives. So like, uh, for example, if the priest falls, his entire family falls. So <laughs> it, it is a horrible situation. And, but you know, this world is ruled by the devil. And that is why Christ calls him uh, the king of this world, precisely because of that, because you know, the devil's not going to play fair. He's not uh, going to, you know, give you the first move. He's not uh, going to have any other tactics. The devil will use every filthy, despicable, evil, uh, sly, shady, uh, dishonorable move that comes to his filthy, darkness-filled mind, you know, and uh, his servants are no better. And who knows, um, you know, as they say in the Desert Fathers, when... Uh, uh, the, the saint, I think it was uh, most probably Saint Anthony the Great, he saw uh, the devil and he asked him, where are you going, you bag of filth? And the, uh, the devil told him, I'm going to teach the uh, sons of man my ways, but in due time, us demons will be taught by the sons of man, you know. And uh, uh, in, in Serbia, we have this expression, evil the, even the devil is making the sign of the cross. It is uh, uh, when somebody does something so heen uh, heinous that, uh, you know, like even devil is shocked, surprised and like, you know, judges the action. And uh, sometimes that's one of those things. So uh, when it comes to this news, I think it is quite possible that some kind of, you know, blackmailing operation was probable and of course this is nothing that comes from the actual church but from the dark evil sides of a state you know and uh, that, that, that does not mean that that the Ameri that american state is this perfect nice state where those things don't ha no they do happen but in some other horrible ways you know so this is just you know some food for the thought and uh, you know we usually call Sergianism that, well, heresy of a church that's too subjugated to worldly interests. But uh, I know, I think that was there a long time ago, you know. Um, the worldly powers uh, are generally content with letting the church do its stuff as long as they don't keep quiet and don't support anything rebellious against the state. Um, uh, 
that would be it. If you have any, you know, thoughts, com comments, especially something comforting, <laughs> uh, I'm so for uh, for it here. Bye.